So Stephen A. Smith weighs in on if Bronny James is worthy of being on an NBA roster. Stay right there. I, I can't say anymore. I, I'm probably already in trouble for mentioning it to a, uh, well, we, we call you normies. Well, well, well. So, of course, this is from the Stephen A. Smith Show. Now, the title of this video is Brody Needs to Be in the G League for LeBron's Sake. Now, this video is about 11 minutes long. I want to react to it, okay? Uh, so no long intro for this one. We're going to get right into what Stephen A. Smith has to say concerning Bronny James and to a lesser degree or maybe to a larger degree, his father, LeBron James. Right. So this is a YouTube video. I'm going to do re a reaction. So for all of you, let the video play ninjas. For all of you, stop pausing the video ninjas. Fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> A link will be in the description box for you to watch this without my commentary or criticism or interruption, right? If you're still here and you're enjoying my content, thank you very much for your viewership and fair use. Let me transition to sports because large crowds have been showing up to see Lakers rookie Bronny James play during the NBA Summer League games in both Las Vegas and San Francisco. But his performance so far is not justifying the hype. Ladies and gentlemen, he's now 0 for 15 from three-point range. He's averaging 4.3 points, 3.8 rebounds, one and a half assists through four games. He's also missed one game with knee swelling. Now... Before we continue on this, you see the statistic on your screen right there. He's played four games. At the time of me recording this video, they won against the Hawks. That's the first win. Four games, 4.3 points per game, 7 for 31 from the field. He made one three-pointer, uh, I think, the other night against the Hawks. Rebounds, 3.8. Assists, 1.5. Steals, 1.3. Lakers are 0-4 in games that Bronny has played. All right. So, wait a minute, because I might be wrong on that. Let me, let me check myself that he won against the Hawks the other night because I don't want to be wrong. So, let me go here to the Summer League. I'm sorry. I was mistaken. Okay, they won against the Hawks, 87-86. to 86. All right. So, Let's continue, Mr. Smith. These summer league stats are not far off from the underwhelming numbers Bronny put up in his loan season at USC. Those performances have many questioning if Bronny has a real NBA future. Finals MVP Jalen Brown was sitting courtside of the game with girlfriend Kizre Gondrazik and her former teammate Angel Reese and seemed to be caught saying, quote, I don't think Bronny is a pro. It's all over the social media and all that stuff. That's the only reason why I posted it. Brown did not confirm or deny saying this, but. Now, I posted this as a short on my channel. Many of you watched it. Uh, the sound wasn't there, but shout out to Legend Z because I saw it on his channel on uh, X. And then I copped the video myself and put my own edits in there. But the words aren't there, the, 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 the voice. But you obviously can read lips along with the captions and see what he's saying. And obviously him and the young lady he was with. We're talking about Bronny James. Yes, they were. And of course, he had to walk it back with a statement afterwards because everybody knew he was talking about Bronny. And to not be in the bad state with uh, LeBron James, a.k.a. the NWO of the NBA, he had to put out a statement. For just $5 a month, please consider becoming a member of Welcome to Normieville. There you will find access to members-only videos and members-only live streams, as well as a host of other perks. Thank you for your consideration. Back to the video. Did take to X to share his thoughts on Bronny after people reacted to his perceived slight, saying this, quote, It's a flex to have your son alongside you in the NBA. It reflects greatness and longevity. Bronny has all the tools around him to be successful. I look forward to watching his growth, end quote. Beautiful, beautiful quote by Jalen Brown. Uh, because... Um, it says what most of us should be saying. We're rooting for Bronny James. We just haven't seen evidence yet that he'll succeed. 
That's basically what Jalen Brown has said. 0 for 15 is 0 for 15. You can go through a stretch. You can go through all of those things. See, this is the reason why I've never seen Bronny James play. Of course, I will see him now. And, of course, I would have gone to see him uh, this year at USC had he stayed there. I wasn't really concerned about last year because when you survive a cardiac arrest at his young, youthful age, I was more concerned about him being healthy enough. Running up and down the court, the minute you're feeling so fatigued, you might be scared to death. And so I was worried about that. Now, respect to Bronny James for recovering from that uh, that injury or that condition, right? Because for some, that injury is absolutely fatal. So him, for one, being able to recover, and two, being able to get back on the court and to continue to uh, play basketball at a professional level is something that is to be commended and congratulated. So props to him, respect to Bronny James for uh, – surviving that and getting back on top. Um, but I have been, and I, and I don't want to use the word criticism because I'm not, I'm not trying to, ins to criticize LeBron James. Look, oh, yeah. man, he's LeBron James, one of the greatest players in the history of basketball. Top three easily. I think top two. Better resume from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar than LeBron James. Uh, but nevertheless, LeBron James, I believe, is the second greatest player in the history of basketball behind Michael Jordan. Having said all of that, again, not criticizing, but just pointing out, that's a real tough spot he put himself in. You don't get to, to dial that back. When you say, I want to play in the NBA with my son, when you say you want to be his teammate, when you indicate that you're willing to go to any team that drafts him and you'd be willing to play on the minimum salary just to be in the same uniform as your team, that's what LeBron James said in the past. That is absolutely what he said in the past. To the degree where he even said that Bronny was better than, I uh, forgot, a certain number of percentage of players in the league playing right now. And so now he's in the league and he's laying eggs all over the place in terms of statistics. Everybody's criticizing Bronny for his game, how he plays, the whole nepotism thing and all that because that's obvious, right? And he has to deal with all that. Just like, again, I refer to Lonzo Ball, when he came in the league, his dad had him hyped up, super super hyped up, right? His dad did a very good job of promoting his son. And for that, I commend him. However, he had to take the good with the bad on that. And there was, um, there was a lot of negative. The shoe thing, you know, there was controversy with that. He had injuries. His shot was very unusual, things like that. And now he's on the Bulls, which he's played better there than he's ever been with the Lakers. I think after that, he, even going, he went to the, uh, the Pelicans, I believe. And so, yeah, he's on the downside of his career. And he's getting over a, a knee surgery as well, if I'm not mistaken. So this could go horribly wrong for Bronny if he doesn't improve quickly. Okay. Even said in the past, went so far as to say that his son was better than some NBA players now. And so you put that and heaped that level of expectation. Your heart was clearly in the right place. LeBron James should not be criticized for that. He's a dad and a wonderful dad by all accounts. It ain't for us to judge him and the love that he has for his son and, and how that love should be portrayed, except in certain public situations. I, I'm not trying to talk about a father and his son. I'm talking about an NBA player who is incredibly brilliant and savvy, making one of the greatest mistakes he could have ever made by bloviating about his son to the degree that he did in terms of wanting to play alongside him. Ronnie James was an All-American averaging 14 points a game. Kendrick Perkins has been on this show on several occasions talking about you don't get to be a McDonald's All-American averaging 14 points a game. That doesn't happen. It happened for LeBron James' son. Who was the 55th pick in last year's NBA draft? We don't know who the hell that is. No, we do not know who that is. Let me find the Undertaker bill because I need to play it right now. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, uh, man. Who was the 55th pick last year? We have no idea. 
And I believe that Stephen A is going to illustrate how much money this individual that I have no idea who it was got paid for being the 55th pick in the second round of the NBA draft last year in 2023. All right? The fact of the matter is Brian James has uh, benefited, whether he liked it or not, in college, in high school, and now the pros. He has heavily benefited from his father being one uh, LeBron James. I mean, it is what it is. We can't do anything about that. If I was LeBron James, if I was a you know a billionaire or somebody famous, you're damn right my son would benefit from my status, my clout, my popularity, my professional or my profession. That being said, though, there should be a way that you can have your child benefit from you without uh, being handicapped. They should be able to still somehow make it on their own merits along with your cachet not because of it. And I think a lot of people echo that same sentiment. Just saying. I'm really a nice guy. I'm just, people just have me all wrong, Skip. I'm really not like that. We do know that he got paid about a half a million dollars. We know that Bronny James got picked 55th overall in this draft, and he's guaranteed $8 million. We know that LeBron James was talking about going anywhere his son went, even if it meant him playing for the minimum. And lo and behold, he ended up not having to at all. Because after Bronny James got drafted, LeBron James re-ups yep. for over $100 million. Yep. Now, let me be very clear. LeBron James is underpaid. LeBron James no. deserves, I don't give a damn what his salary is, he deserves more. Because not only is he a superstar, even at the age of 40, he's also box office, even at the age of 40. That's what he'll be this December. Yep. Even in the 22nd season, the brother is box office. So he pays for himself. Ain't about that. All I'm trying to say is that Bronny's in a bad spot because the scrutiny that's going to be heaped upon him is going to be immense. Now, I will add to that. The scrutiny that Bronny James is facing is already immense. And as long as he is in the league and his dad is in there with him, well, to be, able to be honest, because of the fact his name, his last name is James, his scrutiny is only going to get progressively worse by the day, by the game, by the press conference. It's going to get progressively worse. Everybody already had their opinion about him before he got in the league. And then he gets in there, and the statistics don't bear out the hype. Like I said, the same thing happened with Lonzo. And so now the... The scrutiny comes from positive and more, you know, I hope he makes it. I hope he does well to now. Why is he here? He deserves to be in the G League. Here's the title of this video and so on and so forth. Like I said before, Bronny James is going to have to progressively get better or the negative opinions and publicity is only going to get worse. It really, really is. And then when you give him the kind of guaranteed contract, you know he ain't going to end up in the G League. He's going to end up on a roster spot. Now, I don't have a problem with the roster spot. Because Thanasis, the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo's brother, is on the squad. And a lot of people say, hey, he wouldn't be on the squad if it wasn't for his brother. Hell with that. Greek freak is the Greek freak. And if he wants his brother on the squad, I'm not hating on that. Nepotism happens all over the place, especially in the NBA. Now, in Brian James' defense, not a lot of people talk, well, as far as I know, not a lot of people talked about uh, the Greek Freak's brother being in the NBA as well, and him also benefiting from his brother's popularity and uh, clout, if you will. So, was, was we... To be fair to Bronny, we got to call on both sides, right? So if you're going to say over here, you're going to say, well, there's nepotism over here. Well, there's also nepotism going on. Uh, there's nepotism in different places going on in the NBA. We should maybe speak on that too. So to be fair to Bronny, Stephen A. Smith has a very good point here. I'm not hating on that. I'm talking about actual playing time. What we've seen from Bronny James thus far, all I'm going to say is that Unless there's vast improvement, 
The only time we better see him is sitting on the bench or in practice. Because if he's out there on the basketball court, nobody's going to believe that's on his merits. They're going to believe it's because of LeBron James. And you already believe in that anyway, and that puts him in a bad spot, which is why I've never watched him, because I've never wanted to have to cover him, because I don't want to do that to the kid. I want to give him an opportunity to grow and shine. It ain't his fault that his dad was out there doing what he did and turned to bloviating about his name all over the place. And I'm not saying it in an insulting way not trying to be remotely disrespectful to LeBron James. Major props to him. He loves his son that much, man. Ain't no, it's no crime. It's just that, damn, you're so media savvy. You know. You had to know what this was going to, what kind of pressure this was going to mount on his shoulders. And it's just unfortunate to see people scrutinizing Bronny the way that they're doing already. It's not because of him. It's because of his dad. Well, well, well. Uh, Stephen A., you are absolutely right. <laughs> now, because me personally, me, me personally, I made a, you no, know, I made like you no know, fifty cents or a dollar on uh, covering Brian James myself. I've put some shorts out about him and some other videos. That people criticize him now. Personally, myself, yeah. He's in the league because of his dad. Unfortunately, he's here now. He's got to make the best of it. So he has a chance. He does have a chance. And I don't hate him for it either. But again, he's in the league now, so the scrutiny is coming. And it's coming very fast. Pause. And so some of the league is going on just like if any other player was, you know, laying eggs. If LeBron James out there freaking, you know, having a bad game or a bad night or he missed a shot in the finals or something like that. Guess what? He got covered. Remember he, when he he uh, laid an egg in the finals and then he came to the press conference and his hand was all bandaged up and he was talking about, oh, I was messing with a hand injury the whole time, blah, blah, making excuses. He got roasted for that, and rightfully so, because he had a built-in excuse, like I said once before. Bronny is going to face the same scrutiny as his dad, probably more because of how he was – uh, publicize how he, how he was promoted. And so you're jealous because you don't get the attention from the queendom that I get, but you're not me. I told you this before. And it ain't because it'd be one thing if it was because of your LeBron James son. And that's the only reason. No, because you can't help that. It's literally because of all the talking LeBron James did about him in terms of what he wanted for himself as a father. I want my son in the NBA. I want to play with my son in the NBA. And then obviously facilitated it happening with the Los Angeles Lakers to the point where, where uh, uh, Rob Palenka and J.J. Redick and everybody get up there and they're clapping and all of this other stuff for the second round pick. Like they just drafted the number one overall pick, who, by the way, we don't talk about at all. So I'm just looking at stuff like that, and I'm like, really? And then Rob Palenka comes out, and I, I, y'all thought I was joking. I actually called the executive producer for General Hospital, Frank Valentini, about, uh, about Rob Palenka. Oh, you know, it's just such a touching thing to see, and wow, you know, I mean, this is just a, a great story. I don't have the exact words, exact quote in front of me, but y'all know where I'm getting at. Y'all know what I'm referring to, because Rob Palenka did that after they drafted him. And I'm like, really? I mean, you I mean, and the Oscar goes to... Give me a break. Stop. Okay? So I, I, I just, I, I feel bad. You know, Ronnie needs time. He's going to grow. I got every confidence that he's going to be a good player. I'm rooting for him. I'm not rooting against him. I got nothing negative to say about him. 0 for 15 are your stats. 23% shooting, 7 for 31 from the field. Those are your stats. Those are actual data. Okay? So he's got a lot to work on. I'm just of the mindset that, damn, his dad knew better. His dad knew better. And I'm wondering right now, based on what we're seeing in Summer League, is it going to be good for Bronny James to even be on the bench? Because if he's in the locker room wearing a Lakers uniform during games, you know they're going to bother LeBron James at every turn about him. As they should. 
if he's going to be on the court for the entirety of the season, this is going to be nonstop. Especially if you're going to put him out there on the court with the big dogs. And he has stats like this in the summer league during the regular season. Oh, man. Every time LeBron James gets in front of a podium, they're going to be asking about his son. Because we all know LeBron James is going to get his numbers. He's still very much uh, a very skillful player. Still top, I would say, two or three players in the league right now. So we know he's going to get his numbers. That's, that's no question. He's going to be getting asked about his son. And it's going to happen every time they play. Well, how do you think your son doing? Are you training him or, you know, the, the, his injuries, if he has any, and blah, blah. It's, it's, it won't be about LeBron anymore. It'll be about his son. And, again, they'll be asking, well, why is he not in the G League or whatever, depending on how good or bad he does. It's going to be nonstop. He, he's right. If he's in the G League, no. LeBron, he's going to be there developing and growing and getting better and getting himself ready for the NBA going up against stiffer competition rather than being in, in college, that's fair. But it's also not going to put LeBron James in a position where he's got to answer about his son every day. Because I'm telling you right now, he's going to blow a gasket. LeBron's going to lose it. I don't care how composed he is. I don't care how good he is. I don't care how composed and professional and in line he has been throughout his illustrious career. Taking the high road, as he said. This is his son. There's only but so much he's going to take if he keeps getting bombarded with questions about Bronny every day because Bronny is on that bench in uniform and in the locker room pregame and postgame. I'm just making a suggestion. Until he's ready, he should, he should be in the G League. There you go. Until he's ready, face he should be in the G League and a lot of people are echoing that same sentiment there is a chance that Bronny James can get better we all hope so but the numbers are what they are like most of us say and uh, you're in the league now Bronny you gotta, live up to, you gotta live up to the hype and I assume this summer league was a way to get you acclimated with the NBA you know you're playing with the little dogs okay these guys are fighting for roster spots while you already got one. You're just, this is just practice for you, which, hey, it is what it is. I mean, he had to play at some point. So let him get his practice in the, in the uh, summer league. And then when training camp starts, all the other stuff, he'll be right along as to his dad and JJ Reddick and Rob Palenka and everybody else be able to help him get to where he needs to be for the regular season. And I, me personally, I'm rooting for the guy. I hope that he makes the jump from college, from summer league to the regular season NBA. Until then, if he lays any more eggs during the summer league, I will be there to cover it. And if any other updates happen with him regarding himself as an individual or the team or him and his dad, you know me as a normie will be here to cover it, all right? So, with that being said, thank you for attending another episode of Normieville. Ah. You know me, I'm just a normie here to bring you the latest and greatest in sports, news, entertainment, and politics. Let me know what you think about what Stephen A. Smith had to say, and if you believe that he's, telling, that he's, uh, he's right or he's wrong, let me know what you think about it down in the comment section, and please, please, Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell on your way out of the door. And I will see you on the next video.